Hi, I'm Eduardo and you are in the basement of the JavaScript Hunted House. I have bad and good news for you. Bad news is that the window just locked it by itself. There's no way out. Now you have no choice but to go ahead and explore this mansion to find your flash drive. Good news is that I'm your friend and I'm going to help you teaching you JavaScript so you can go forward, solve the mystery and get out of this place alive. This adventure is suitable for beginners who want to learn JavaScript. To understand how JavaScript works, it is important to have the basics of how HTML is structured and how CSS determines the style of these elements. JavaScript is basically a programming language used to communicate with browsers and web pages. When we type an address in our browser, we are requesting a web page that can be divided into three parts HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is the page structure, CSS is the style, and JavaScript the behavior. It is loaded with the rest of the page and determines its behavior on different situations and events. With JavaScript, we can communicate with both the page and the browser. We can find and manipulate elements within the web page. We can animate content. We can create interactivity, which means we can respond in a friendly way at the click of a button or mouse movement. We can also pick up information from the browser and return it to the server without reloading the page. Even though JavaScript is mainly used in browsers, it can also be used in databases, servers, gaming, and robotics. JavaScript is present in almost all websites, and you're probably using it right now without knowing. Try disabling it in your browser and see what happens. Many elements and pages will change completely, even stop working. Remember that JavaScript is not Java and even having similar names, they are two different programming languages. To start using JavaScript, you don't have to install anything, because current browsers support its code base. This code allows the browser to understand any JS code without any extra installation or configuration. It is very easy to work with JavaScript, and it would be very important if you could create a file to try all the comments as I'm teaching you. You can use any text editor. Just create an HTML file and put a script tag in it. Insert JavaScript code between them and run the file in any browser to see the results. You can put the script tags in the head or in the body of your HTML code depending on the purpose of the code and its loading time. Old examples may use a type attribute with a text JavaScript value, which is no longer necessary because JavaScript is now the default HTML scripting language. JavaScript files can also be placed in an external file with the extension JS and added to the HTML with the parameter source. This is a widely used practice since it organizes the code separating the JS code from the HTML code. To load an external JavaScript file, just put the file path in the source property of the script tag. To make it even more clean and organized, we usually put the script files in a separated folder. So in order to load a file, we must pass the full path to it. We can also load remote files. To do so, simply put the script URL in the source attribute. When a page is loaded by the browser, all the code is organized and interpreted. The translation of this code appears on the screen, visually adapted to the user. But behind it, however, the source continues all in text form the way it was received by your browser. 
This code is organized by the browser creating what we call the DOM. DOM stands for Document Object Model, which is a structured representation of a web page that defines how external programs can interact with it by changing its structure, style, and content. It looks like a tree because it has branches, different levels that can be explored and specified as required by the developer. Each node represents a page element. Each HTML element is represented as an object, which can be accessed by JavaScript. As you may already know, each HTML element has a tag, and it can also have an ID or a class. When the JavaScript interacts with the DOM, it uses these identifiers to select and change only a specific element or elements. There are methods that can be used for this interaction, such as getElementById. We can, for example, call document.getElementById and pass the name of the intended ID as a parameter, and JavaScript will return the chosen object. There are other methods to find and select objects, such as getElementById and getElementById. As output methods, we basically have four options. Alert, document.write, element.innerHTML, and console.log. Let's see how they work. Window.alert, or simply alert, creates a simple alert box on the screen with whatever content we want. Type in alert ghosts screams, in refreshing the page, we can see with document.write, we can write content within the HTML, like this. It's important to notice that if the document.write is used after the page has finished loading, it overwrites all the HTML, so beware. One of the most useful methods to interact with the DOM Inner HTML allows us to make changes in the content of a single element. For example, if we select the div tag with the ID header and use Inner HTML to put a sentence inside it, we can update the page and see the changes. Oh, I almost forgot. You'll have to gather some items to solve the mysteries and keep moving forward. So we need a place to store these items. Here's an inventory. It is very simple by now, but we'll improve it a little bit every chapter. As you can see, it's a list structure common in HTML. Let's start by identifying it. We'll use JavaScript to give it a name. Let's select the h1 tag with the ID title and use inner HTML to name it. Let's give it a name like hunted inventory. Cool, huh? Throughout the chapters, we'll improve it and use it as we need to. Finally, the console.log allows us to display values and messages on the browser's console, located in the Developers Tool menu. Well, I guess that's enough for now. JavaScript is very easy to learn, and I'm going to help you master it so you can find what you're looking for. Now, you have to find a way out of this basement. Good luck. See you in the library.